Hey guys, welcome back to Camera Store. We're here with another system video and this time we're going to be talking about medium format and we have Nuno from Camera Store and uh, we're going to talk about uh, who wants to shoot medium format, why, maybe what cameras you can choose from, different systems and so on. So this is all an article at camerastore.com so go check it out but if you want to see a more visual uh, explanation we're here for you. So Nuno, medium format. Yeah, let's just say that medium format is cool. I think it, for me, when I got my first scans from a medium format camera, I think it was like a eureka moment. I like, okay, this is what film is about. So what medium format will give you, it will give you a bigger negative. So larger emitting sensor, basically. So yeah, medium format will give you better quality in overall all sense of the word. Uh, here we have on the table, quite different looking cameras. As yeah. you can see, we have little folders, uh, TLRs, which we mentioned in another episode. We have a panoramic camera, square, and a digital one. So basically, medium format is not a something specific. It's just it, what basically it means it uses a, a roll film, uh, usually known as 120 or 220. And basically, it can be ranged from, let's say, 6x45 to 6x17. and uh, the first number will mean it's uh, six centimeters uh, tall, and another number will tell you the width. So 17 being 17 centimeters, which is a panoramic image, of yeah. course. So yeah, no, basically what I think is very important on medium format is as contrary to 35. Mm -hmm. uh, most cameras in 35 are basically SLRs or rangefinder cameras. In medium format, there's quite a lot of different varieties. You have rangefinders, TLRs, which are pretty rare to see in 35, not that it's impossible, but there's very rare. You have the specific cameras, like you said, panoramic, and then you have also architectural cameras like the flex body or the arc body. Uh, you have uh, very, like a lot of systems that are modular, which is very, very interesting. And not modular like, yeah, a 35 millimeter camera, you can change the lens, but in these cameras, most of them, at least this part and many others, you can change the back. So you can be shooting professionally, changing backs, have multiple film stocks and so on, which to me is, I mean, you can tell it was a professional choice. It wasn't so much the amateur choice back then. Yes, there's some medium format old cameras like mm -hmm. the you know, brownie style or the little six by nine folders, but these were all very top of the line professional cameras back then. And nowadays, they're getting up in price, but they're still fairly affordable mm -hmm. for every, everyone, pretty much. Yeah, like you said, these were professional cameras like this. This rolly here used to be the press photographer's tool of choice. And because they could uh, get big, big negative in a small compact body, they can crop it to the 6x6 negative into whatever magazine size. So yeah. that was, this was actually quite popular studio camera as well, because you can crop it however you like. You and know. you can sync it at all speeds because yep. it has an internal leaf shutter, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Like that is usually not the case in most 35. So again, we're talking about pro features. All these three cameras, actually all the cameras, maybe not this one, I'm not sure about the sync speed, but these all sync at flash at all shutter speeds, which mm -hmm. is amazing. So yeah, I think when you want to get into medium format, maybe what are you looking for? Because yes, these were very professional cameras, but today we're in 2020 making this video. Why would you choose medium format? I think it's, to me, it, it comes down the look. With a larger negative size, you can get more depth of field, of course, and the depth of field will get a smaller in a sense. Let's say a 2.8 lens, which is uh, in 35 terms. Okay, fast lens mm -hmm. for a prime lens, but it's it's a very fast lens for a, for a medium format camera. It will give you that 3D pop that you see. Yeah, it's very popular to see some something like this or the the newer Hasselblad in wedding photography, yeah. portraiture, um, like uh, for magazines, headshots, and etc. Stuff like that. So, no, yeah, I think the fact that you can shoot 2.8 lens and it doesn't seem fast, but believe me, on medium it's, format is it's then very the thin. the fact that you can change the frame sizes is amazing. Mm -hmm. You can go for six, four, five, like you mentioned, like the Hasselblad shoots, it's more film economy, but still giving you three times the size of a 35 pretty much. Then you can go for like panoramics, which are unbeaten. And even in today's standards for digital cameras, this probably properly scanned can 
be as big as you want. Yeah, it's a billboard size yeah. scan. One thing to mention is, yes, we're talking about all pretty much film cameras, but there is medium format digital. This one actually is too. Mm -hmm. It's a hybrid, you can change the backs, but there are medium format and digital, so you can shoot digital medium format too. Just most of the cameras nowadays that are affordable are film. Yeah, and as you mentioned, that the, the, we have the digital stuff and why someone might choose if they are into medium format photography, but like that, this is a, you can get a nice car with the price of that camera. So mm -hmm. choosing a, let's say a six by seven camera, you can get even bigger, uh, let's say the sensor size with a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. Of course there's processing uh, cost and uh, the film stock cost, but still it's way cheaper to shoot film. And even film still has the, so much latitude, especially with the medium format film, the latitude on, in the highlight is unbeatable in yeah. terms of camera technologies. No, the bigger the film is, do know that you usually it has like more space for latitude. So mm -hmm. like 35 when you enlarge it or you scan it and make it bigger, it has more grain, it has more contrast here. If you're doing black and white fine photography and you're shooting and enlarging, it's amazing to shoot medium format or if you're scanning and giving to clients. One thing that I think is very important is that it has, there's a medium format camera for everyone. Mm -hmm. There's budget options and let's mention a couple in the different segments. So budget options, I would mention, for example, TLRs, yeah, you uh, got Yashica. You got, there's a million of different TLR brands, but yeah, let's say Yashica C is a good good budget option. It has pretty much everything you need to get it going and 3.5 mm -hmm. aperture lens, so it's relatively Ma fast. Ma the Mamiya C line in mm -hmm. the TLRs are still fairly affordable, especially if you don't go for the latest C330. The C220, uh, C22, which are a little older, but still work in the same way, are fairly inexpensive. Then if you want to go for a rangefinder in the budget option, what would you choose? Uh, in the budget, there's some Fujis, like the GF645 line. There's multiple different Fuji, Fuji cameras. And of course, these are representing the premium line. These go for a lot more, but you can essentially get... Yeah, the Fuji 645s are pretty yeah, inexpensive. They're, and they're quite small cameras, e easy to take with you, and you have a wide angle lens with them, the normal lens, some, some even have autofocus, some even has autofocus and zoom lenses, yeah. built-in flashes. Like, yeah, yeah. But some and cutting edge stuff, in just, this was late in the mid 2000s, was still being produced some yeah. medium format cameras. Yeah, and then if you want to get something like uh, an SLR, like the Hasselblad, which has always been the camera of choice for people mm -hmm. wanting a premium SLR that's modular, I think there are options, for example, by Bronica, which mm -hmm. are fairly inexpensive. There's also the Bronica GS1, which is 6x7, but still kind of very similar design. Yep. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, even Hasselblad, depending on the models, the ones with the motor under are entry level-ish. And then if you want to go for medium line, I think we still have pretty much the ones here. There's the Hasselblad also the medium line, Rolly cords or the non 2.8 Rolly yep. flexes. And then there's top of the line, which at the end depends on the market. Yep. Prices go up and down, but Mamiya 7s, Plowbells, Linhoffs, Hasselblads, I mean, you name it, they're pretty much the top of the top. Yeah, and in terms of AF, you have the Mamiya 645 AF. For example, if you're looking into the Hasselblad area, but it's that's a premium premium model, so the Mamiya yeah. 645 AF is a good good or, alternative. Yeah, Pentax 645 uh, N and N2 yeah, also are pretty perfect. good. And also for the wedding price, like you were saying, wedding photography here, I think mm -hmm. the Contax is one to mention yeah. with that 80 F2 cause ice glass, which is amazing. So yeah, I think medium format is one of those systems. I mean, we're calling it a system. It's basically a film format. Like you mentioned, the role is the one that's calling it medium format. There is also technical cameras, which I think is important with like Bellows, like yep. Linhoff has some and Horseman has some. So you can pretty much shoot anything. Yeah, and uh, now that you mentioned the, the system cameras, we can actually, there's a, a roll film backs for pretty much every large format camera. So just stick a Craflex back on, uh, let's say a Linhoff Technica and you're golden. You can just, because of course, large format, film is more expensive, you can do test shots with a raw yeah. film, you can get burn through that more easily. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people that actually do do that. And for example, if you're shooting 4x5 and you like slides, 4x5 mm -hmm. slides are Yikes. very expensive, especially for processing and scanning. You can shoot raw film, 6x7 or 6x9, mm -hmm. which is still very big film, and have, you know, that extra slide pricing 
from the raw film. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all we could cover about media format. I think it's very interesting, especially for people coming from 35, because it's a very different format. And most people may be shooting digital that are finding film. 35 millimeter in film is affordable and fun to learn, but the moment you start seeing this is yeah. you get like in love with the formats. So basically, larger the negative size, smaller the grain size, more detail, more clarity, and more, more everything pretty much. And a bit of a slower pace, which is sometimes yeah. nice. So yeah, let's say a camera like this will get you a four photos per roll. So that's you have to really think about if you're if you're having a hard time thinking about 35 millimeter shots, like thinking straight, you have to think even more with this. Yep. So yeah, let us know if you're into medium format, if you shoot it, if you've been you know wanting one of these cameras on the table, and maybe we can help you. You can check camerastore.com for some of this, um, you know, gear. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.